Oh, yes. Okay, so supply and demand. Hopefully you already know the basics about supply and demand. That supply is upward sloping, demand is downward sloping. Tracing down, we have our equilibrium quantity. Tracing to the side, we have the price equilibrium. Basically the price that producers and consumers agree on. So here's my product. I've got Frichinos, which is a new cereal. It's becoming very popular. So demand, of course, for that is going to go up. So demand going up is a shift towards the higher quantities. I'll call this demand curve two. Uh, now we have our new equilibrium point, our new equilibrium quantity, which has increased, and our new price equilibrium, which has increased. So in this box, I'm going to say PE has gone up, and EQ, oh, I'm running out of room, but EQ has also gone up. Okay, next thing again, still with Frichinos, our very popular cereal. Now a new report comes out, it says that it causes baldness. Oh my god, no one wants to look like me. Okay, so now again I've got supply and demand set up the same way, equilibrium quantity, price equilibrium, demand going down for this situation means that fewer people are going to buy at each and every price. So this demand curve shifts in back towards zero. This is demand going down. Uh, new equilibrium point tracing down. We get our new equilibrium quantity, which clearly has decreased because it's moved back towards zero. A new price equilibrium, PE2, which has also gone down. So in this box, I'm going to say price equilibrium has gone down. Equilibrium quantity has also gone down. Okay, now moving to a second product, let's say it's the iPad. Now we're going to look at some of the supply shifts. There's five reasons why supply could shift. Basically, if there's a situation that makes the producer more likely to produce more at each and every price, then we'll see supply go up. So, here's the situation. Better technology for the production of the iPad. Okay, makes it to where the producer can produce more at each and every price. We get supply going up. Supply going up is a shift towards the higher quantities. So to S2, again, new equilibrium point, trace down, new equilibrium quantity, which has clearly gone up. Uh, trace over to the y-axis, and we have the price, which has gone down. So I'm going to put that the price equilibrium has gone down. I'm going to put that the equilibrium quantity has gone up, given that scenario. Second situation, cost of production goes up. It makes it more difficult for the business. They're probably not going to be as willing and able to produce as much at each and every price. So this situation makes it more difficult for the business to produce at each and every price. So now they're going to produce less. So here is a supply decrease. A decrease because it's shifting back towards the lower quantities. Again, we get a new equilibrium point. Trace down, we get a new equilibrium quantity, which has clearly gone down. We get a price, which is now higher, PE2. So again, in this box, I'm going to put the price went up and our quantity went down. So reasons that supply and demand would shift, these five reasons here are the five reasons why supply would shift. You can remember it because you take the first letter of each one, it spells out the word panic. Uh, reasons why demand would shift, so the demand shifters, there's six of them, they spell out the word nicest, taking the first letter of each one. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going out dancing. Oh, here's Mr. Fritchin. Mr. Fritchin dancing with me. Okay. Hey. What are we doing? <laughs>